Should you train when you're tired? This is a question I get a fair bit, and today I'm particularly an expert. I just got off of a flight yesterday, but it was like a, I don't know, like a 10 or 12 hour time change coming from Europe, and I'm exhausted. Slept about four or five hours last night. Kids were up early, because I was bringing the kids back from Europe. They were also screwed up, so they started playing and eating at about 2.30 in the morning. It's now about one in the afternoon. I'm really beginning to feel it. I'm really tired. Coincidentally, I did train today, but I did have to modify the training. I'm gonna talk about that. So, should you train when you're tired? My answer here comes from having tried many, many different things. I've tried just gutting through it. Yes, damn it, I'm tired. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna train hard no matter what. For example, I did this in 2006. In 2006, I already had one kid. I had a second kid. I was trying to hold together a failing marriage. I was working full-time as a firefighter and I had just been accepted into the Abu Dhabi trials and I was all excited about doing that because I was actually still at a pretty good level. You know, I, my training hadn't suffered too much yet because the second kid was still very young. The only time though that I could train, that I could get that extra training in to bring myself up to the peak was at like 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. I had a couple of friends who got up super early they also went to bed relatively early. Anyhow, they got up super early. I would get up super early. We'd meet up at 5.30 or sometimes 6 to train. I'd get a good, hard sparring session in. Then I'd run off to work at the fire department. I'd run off home to grab the kids. And guess what? I didn't go to bed early. I'd stay up late, working on the grapple arts thing, working the second job. And within a month, I was really, really badly injured. I got a pinched nerve in the neck that felt like there was someone jabbing a knife or an ice pick into this shoulder all the time for months. And I tried everything. I tried acupuncture, I tried massage, I tried chiropractic, I tried ice, I tried traction, I tried anti-inflammatories. I tried a whole bunch more things and none of them worked. Everything was either completely ineffectual or it made things worse. In the end, I had a dropout. That was the last serious competition that I would have wanted to compete in. And honestly, the neck's never been the same. And it was a really good object lesson. You can't just keep on whittling away at your sleep if you're training hard. If you're training hard, you need to rest hard. I've noticed, for example, when I do heavy squats, not so much deadlifts, but more squats, the moment I add heavy squats to my routine, A, my hunger goes through the roof, B, I need to sleep an extra hour. If I feel pretty good after eight hours of sleep, when I'm not squatting, when I start to squat, do heavy, heavy squats to failure, multiple sets, then all of a sudden I need nine hours of sleep every single time. And conversely, if I'm not getting enough sleep, say I'm just making it by on six hours a night, and then I add heavy squats to my routine, all of a sudden it feels like I'm getting four or five hours of sleep a night, inevitably I break down, I overtrain, which means you get sick, which means you get injured, which means that something's gonna break. Because you cannot train hard if you're consistently not resting enough. So how much sleep do you actually need? The sad answer is it varies from person to person and like I just said, on the activity that you're doing. Some people out there are just blessed with good genetics. They can get by on five hours of sleep a night for years and years and years and keep going. And I wish I was one of those people. I can usually get by on about seven hours of sleep, cutting into six, but at six I start going downhill. And like I said, when there's heavy training involved, that's immediately an extra hour. And when you take a look at a lot of the pros who are training, yeah, they're sleeping at night, they're taking all kinds of steroids and hormone enhancements and growth hormone, other things to help them recover faster, which means they need less sleep. And then they're often napping in the afternoon. So, you know, that's how they're handling that heavy volume of training. If you're not on the gear, if you're not taking all kinds of extra supplements, if you're not in a position where you have the luxury to take the afternoon nap, to sleep in, because you've got to get up and go to your job, because you've got to get up and take the kids, because you've got to go up and take care of your mom, whatever it is, it's going to be really hard to train as hard as the professionals, especially those professionals, are younger. So, how much sleep do you need? It varies from person to person and only you can figure that out. Some people need eight hours. Some people need nine hours. Some people, I hate them, 
They only need five hours. You need to figure out where your optimal uh, sleep amount is. There's a really good book called The Sleep Thieves that you should read if you're interested in this topic. It sounds kind of like a boring topic, you know, the amount of sleep people need, but it's actually a very well written and highly entertaining read about sleep, the biology of sleep, and how they've tested how much sleep people need. And the answer is, the short answer is you need more than you think you do. If you look at most tribal societies, basically when the lights went out, meaning the sun went down, people more or less went to sleep. You know, they might stay up at the campfire, they might, you know, go to sleep for a bit, wake up, get the campfire going, go back to sleep. But there was a whole lot of sleeping, extra sleeping in hunter-gatherer societies. So probably we're evolved to sleep a lot more than we currently do. Maybe not all in one shot, maybe broken up in chunks over the day. But certainly this getting by for years and years and years on five or six hours of sleep, probably not that much of a historical precedent for it. Probably we're not adapted. And a lot of the people who say, you know, like the Wall Street executives who say, oh, well, I work 95 hours a week every week and then on some weeks I work 110. Well, first of all, take a look at how much cocaine they're taking, how much meth, what are the kind of stimulants they're putting in their system, and is it sustainable? Probably not in the long run. All right, so for whatever reason, you're tired today. You didn't get enough sleep last night. You've been training extra hard. Should you still train? The answer is yes, kind of, sort of. It's okay to go and train and just to coast once in a while. As long as you don't coast every day, getting out there, rolling lightly, working an aspect of your technique that you don't normally work, that's okay. It's okay just to go and drill once in a while. It's okay to go and problem solve. That's what I was doing today. Most of the training that I did today with one of my training partners involved getting put in the spider guard. I'd put my training partner in the spider guard and he'd sit back to a leg lock type position to fight for the leg drag to get up and then finalize the leg drag. Then, and I'd give about you know, 10%, 20%, 30% resistance. Enough to give him problems to solve. Then we'd switch. After he would pass my guard, I, he would pull spider guard on me and I would try the same stuff. I would sit back to a leg lock type position, being careful not to reap because we're training with a gi, then work my way into a leg drag position, come back into base, finalize the leg drag. Again, he was giving me 10, 20, 30% resistance. Sometimes we'd stop. I'd say, hey, what if I put my foot here? And he'd go, yeah, I don't really feel that. I'd go, okay. And then you know, we'd go and we'd train and then he'd hold my leg off the ground. And I'd say, yeah, that, that really affects my ability to come to base, but I can shift my weight this way and get my foot down to the ground. So it was kind of a conversation. It was a very easy roll. We had a light sweat going. That was totally appropriate for me, being that I'm completely sleep deprived. I'm time shifted, sleep deprived. If I'd gone hard today, then the odds of my getting injured, the odds of my getting sick, the odds of something going wrong are much higher. And probably, <laughs> I'm hoping, that tomorrow I'm gonna to have some really cha physically challenging exercise. And so I'm trying not to draw my reserves down too much. Here's something that has worked for me a lot in the past. On days when I'm just not feeling it, on days when it's time to work out and I'm like, oh God, here's what I do. I give myself permission to not train that day after I get dressed. Here's something that has worked for me a lot in the past. On days when I'm just not feeling it. On days when it's time to work out and I'm like, oh God, here's what I do. I give myself permission to not train that day after I get dressed. Normally, after I put on my gi and go to class, or after I put on my gi and my training partner comes over, or after I get my workout gear on and go to the gym, I usually, usually, get a second win. It may not be the most epic workout of all time, but it's going to be a workout. It may not be going to failure on every single rep on every single set until I'm completely exhausted. It may just be to get the muscles moving. It may be to challenge them in a relatively safe, relatively constrained way. That's okay. But what I've done is I've given myself permission that once I put on my workout gear, be that a gi, be that a rash guard, be that shorts, once I put that on, and once I go to the training place, if I still completely don't feel it, it's okay at that point to back up. So that means that maybe once or twice a year, a workout gets canceled. I find that this is a good balance. It gives me that out. My body, by the time I've gone through the process of putting on that gear and gone to the gym, 
or put on that gear and gone to a place where people are training, if I still completely don't feel it, basically it's the little voice inside my head. It's my spider sense is tingling. It's going, don't bloody train today, casting. You know your body. You're going to get hurt. Then it's okay to back off. I find that a really useful little, almost a, a pressure release valve, right? Like it takes some of the pressure off and it means I can go. And if I go and train, then that's great. It's one more session on the, on the mats. It's one more time in the gym. It's one more time on the treadmill. It's one more time heading up a mountain. Like I said, it's not going to be an epic workout if you're particularly tired, but doing something is better than nothing. It's one of my favorite sayings. I've said it before in previous podcasts and previous videos. Doing something is better than doing nothing. And if you give yourself permission once in a while to get ready to do something and then in the end to say, nope, I'm out, I'm tapping out, I'm done, and you use that out a couple times a year, great. You're going to lose a couple training sessions a year, but the net result, ironically, is you're going to get on the mat more often. You're going to get into the gym more often. So can you train when you're tired? Yes, but you're not going to go epically hard. Can you train when you're tired? Yes, just be careful. Don't, it's not the day to try out some crazy new technique. It's not the day to have that death roll with that 240 pound super muscular made of bricks blue belt who's killing everybody, including the brown belts, and who moves super dynamically. Because that's going to be the day that he stuffs your leg past you, your toe gets caught, it's going to rip your knee. That's not the day to go super hard. Usually, doing something is better than nothing, but it doesn't need to be fully out. I think this is a lie perpetuated by the bodybuilding community, actually. Especially if you grew up on bodybuilding magazines like I did 20 years ago, 30 years ago. There was a certain school of thought that you always went to failure on every single rep and that you needed to go to failure to have benefit. And a friend of mine, a training, basically the guy who taught me how to weight train, told me right off the bat, he said, you're going to read all this in the magazines. Don't believe it. It's bullshit. Can you get results from sub-maximal effort? Absolutely. Yes, you can. There are definitely times to train hard. There are definitely times to push through. There are definitely times to, you know, balls to the wall training as hard as you can. But if you're particularly exhausted, that's not the day to do it. I hope this helps. I hope this helps clarify uh, your thinking about this topic. It's like that uh, old joke, take my advice. I'm not using it. I'm getting better about using my own advice, at least some of the time. I've made these mistakes over and over and over, and I carry with me to this day some of the scars, the aches, and the pains of pushing it on days when I really shouldn't have pushed it. If you're watching this as a YouTube video, you know, if you haven't already subscribed, man, you really should. If you're listening to this as a podcast, I'd love a review and uh, a rating on iTunes. Whether it's a good review or a bad review, I'm going to be doing a lot more with this podcast in the future, so that would be really useful. Take care. Good luck with your training. Mm-hmm.